1925. <laughs> what branch of service did you serve in and which war? Uh, infantry, uh, in the Army Infantry, World War II. What was your highest rank? PFC. And that stands for? Five is first class. And where did you serve? In uh, Europe. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Where were you living at the time? Van Buren, Maine. Do you remember how old you were? Eighteen. Turned 18 on November 2nd, and uh, by December 15th, I was sworn in the Army. <laughs> wow. And what year was that? 40, 44. <laughs> Do you recall your first days in service? Uh, yeah. Fort Dix. The most notable thing there was the shots. It was the three shots and inoculation <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> All at the same time? <laughs> yeah, you go through a line and that's it. Two shots and a shot and then the inoculation. And the guys pass it out and <laughs> they grab it, they drag them out in the cold and let them come through. <laughs> wow. So uh, did you do your basic training at Fort Dix? No, I went to... Uh, they, uh, what did they do at Fort Dix? Just, it your, was just, just your shots and then... Just a shot and uh, then we got shipped to uh, uh, Georgia. Where in Georgia? Uh, Macon, Georgia. It was a, it was a Fort Wheeler, I think it is, a, for basic training. And what was your basic training like? Oh, very uh, interesting. <laughs> I liked it. You did? What yeah. kinds of things did you do? Well, for infantry. Uh, infantry, uh, uh, map, uh, map uh, compass, find our way around, and uh, rifle. How long did that last? Hmm. What was it? I think I, I, up until around June, because I uh, I came home and on the after basic, I came home up in Van Buren. Do you remember any of your stru instructors from basic training? Not really, no. Any memorable experiences from basic? No, not really. <laughs> So after your basic training, you got leave for how long? It was uh, 15 days. Uh -huh. And you went home to Maine? Mm-hmm. And then where did you go? Then I went to uh, Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Camp what? Shelby. Shelby. And what did you do there? Then we were organized as a, a whole division that we, we were supposed to ship over overseas as a whole division complete. Did you have any training as a whole division uh, before you left? At we, had, we had some training, yes. Uh, the thing in Mississippi we had to watch, watch out more for was snakes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when they organized you into a division, what division was it? 69th. 69th Infantry Division. How big was that? I don't know, but a division. <laughs> <laughs> Large. Uh, did you uh, know anybody else? Did any other of your friends from Maine go in the same division with you? No, but I met uh, some people from uh, a guy from Maine that was, my, was in my class. He was in the uh, Air Cadets and in Mississippi. They were bivouacking right next to us. Oh, wow, <laughs> all the way down there. Yeah. So what kind of training did you do at Camp Shelby? It was the infantry training, uh, rifles, mortar, uh, mortar training. Did you know what your job was going to be yet, what you were going to specialize in? I was a rifleman. That's what I was uh, classified at. So you were a rifleman? Mm -hmm. Were you good? Oh, yeah, I was good. <laughs> I was from, I'm from Maine. I used to hunt. <laughs> Is that why they put you in that? No, I mean, it just what we were the whole division was infantry, yeah. So, you know. What kind of... Um, a weapon did you learn on? We uh, had the uh, M1, the Duran, they call it at that time. How long did you stay at Camp Shelby before shipping out? We shipped out in uh, November. Of 
Oh, whatever. <laughs> or 44, actually, if you joined in, oh, let's see, no, you were in December of 44, so it would have been 45. Mm -hmm. So you shipped out in November? Mm -hmm. Did you know where you were going? England. And what did you think you were going to be doing in England? Well, we were waiting to be assigned to the front, I guess. That's the, went over the whole division. But what happens is they pulled 2,000 of us out of that division and shipped us through France uh, on to replace uh, as replacements in Belgium. Was this after you got to England? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What was your trip like over to England? Do you remember that? Uh, it was choppy. Most of the guys were sick, seasick. Were you? <laughs> no, almost, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you land in England? Oh, I don't know. How long were you in England before they um, shipped you to Belgium? Well, like about two, two or three weeks, about, that's oh, all. That was yeah. Bad. Oh, yeah, they needed the replacements bad, so they pulled us. We weren't supposed to be split up, but they took 2,000 of us. And How did you get chosen? Just randomly? Random, I guess, did yeah. You got to be one of the lucky ones to do that. Um, did you know you were going to Belgium? I know where we were going. <laughs> To Europe, I don't know where we were going. To. So, the 2,000 of you, uh, how did you get to Belgium? Well, first, they, uh, they, I don't know what I'm, they call them, LFC, that we crossed from the channel, and then we got on those uh, 40 and 8, those boxcars, cattle cars they have. <laughs> Cold, miserable. <laughs> uh, that was mid December. Where did you go in Belgium? I don't remember the name of the town. I knew some afterwards, but after we got in combat. Was there a mm. camp there or anything? Uh, no camp, no. We were just uh, in houses and that's it. And how long did you stay there before you were on the road? Well, uh, I got there at night and the next morning we started moving out. <laughs> Well, oh, they didn't give you too much time for a break, huh? No. When I got there, as a uh, service company brought us from, from to join our company, and uh, I get over there it was night, and then I said, I asked where's uh, L Company? That's was the company I I joined, and they says well, in that building over there. So I go over that building. There's seven, seventeen men and one second lieutenant. I said, this is L Company. They say, yeah. We lost a few men, uh, 105 men, uh, yesterday and the day before. <laughs> they had lost 100 men? Well, wounded and some, some dead. So that's why they needed yeah. replacements. So, yeah, real bad. The, so then you were with the L Company for the rest of the war? Yeah. Now, it, was this a different division? So you yeah, that, this was the 84th Division. So now you were in the 84th Division L Company? Mm hmm and the next morning when I got up after that in there and it snowed during the night and the field next to where that little town we were at was uh, all you saw was these mounds and the rifles sticking up with a helmet on top it was the dead dry ice <laughs> I just right yeah I just missed missed that by by a day <laughs> wow you don't remember the name of that town no I don't so where did you march on your first day with L Company where did I went? Where did you go? We went in combat. I don't know where it was, but uh, you were in combat immediately. Right, yeah, practically. Yeah. And what was that like? Well, it wasn't bad because I said when I joined my company, I said seventeen men and one second lieutenant. I said, well, whatever they did, I'm going to watch them and do what they did. they're here. I'm going to do what they do. <laughs> so you did? Yeah, I did, and I come out all right. <laughs> Uh, did you ever bring that company up to full strength? Well, uh, as we went along, after a while, there's, you know, you got all new faces, it keeps, keeps the turnover. You know, they keep setting replacements as if somebody gets hurt and they get back. So you don't, you don't get to know people too well. <laughs> and you don't want to make friends anyway, because why make a friend if you, if you get shot tomorrow? Huh? Now, and your job was a, a rifleman in that company? Uh, no, I was uh, 
when I went to that the house that when I first joined the, the company, uh, the lieutenant asked uh, anybody that B got BAR training, Browning automatic rifle, and I said I do. Here you are, hands me the, <laughs> the Browning automatic rifle. <laughs> Where did you get your training in that, at basic? That I had in basic, yeah. Were you good with the Browning? I was good with the Browning. <laughs> so did you like getting that instead of the other yep, one? Yep, yep. I, uh, I liked it. it was now, really what kind of a weapon was the BAR? Can Bra you tell me anything about that? It was a Browning automatic rifle. It was, just, it was used in World War II. It's an autom You can use it uh, automatic, automatic fire or single shot depending on how well you use it it's got a 20 round clip you use the regular army uh, ammunition and how many of those BARs would be with a company uh, it was usually one <laughs> so I bet you had a lot of friends that wanted to stay by you <laughs> all right so your very first day there then you were in combat um, and then was it continuous? What was it like after that? Where did you no, go? we just, you know, you, you move and you, you go on patrol and see where the enemy are and then you come back and you give a report and then they, uh, sometimes they sh shell the place and all that. And did other times... Stay in that little town? Oh, no, we, we, we never stayed in the one town very long. We just kept moving, moving, moving. So you would go out on combat mm -hmm. and then move to a different town and yeah. stay there? Go out on combat. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, combat experiences that you can recall? Yeah, we, we usually uh, uh, we had this lieutenant here. Uh, oh, can't think of his name now. He's a French name from Massachusetts, and uh, he used to take. He used to like to go on patrols, and he started taking our squad on patrol. He always had good luck. We used to go on reconnaissance patrol. We always ended up fighting our way out. <laughs> but nobody got hurt until the last last attack we went on. He got shot through the hip, the lieutenant, and uh, paralyzed him from waist down. The last attack, April 22nd. Yeah. If you think of his name later, we can add it. The Zonier. How do you spell that? <laughs> I don't know. I forget. Yeah. Uh, say it again and I'll write it. There's only. Okay. Um, how many casualties were in your unit? Do you remember? I don't remember because, like I said, they never told us and we never wanted to know anyway. And it was just a kind <laughs> of just, turnover. Once in a while you see a new face with new faces. Huh? Going through Belgium, what were some of the other places that you went to? Well, we were in Hoofalese, they call it. H O U. And I'm what was that like there? Do you remember? It was uh, snow and cold, and. Uh, <laughs> and were you in combat there? Yeah, we, we we went. We were fighting back and forth there until the. Until the Germans gave up. Did they surrender to you? Yeah, they surrendered to all uh, some of us. Now, when you'd go to these towns, you'd always be fighting the Germans, and they would either surrender or yeah. leave. Or leave. Some some would leave, and some would surrender. And what did you do? You remember any groups that surrendered? Not really. We just didn't pay attention to that. What too would you do when they would surrender? Well, they'd usually take them, give them to somebody, and they'd take them back five miles. So we usually, a stockade was five miles behind our lines, where they kept the prisoners. Now, how long did you stay, stay in Hoopfilets? Didn't stay. Actually, we're moving all the time. <laughs> we're moving. <laughs> wow. Um, were you awarded any medals or citations? I know you were, because I saw some before. Yeah, I got a bronze star. And uh, with a cluster, that's like two bronze stars. <laughs> with an oak leaf, leaf mm -hmm, cluster. Right. Can you tell me uh, how you got that? Well, yeah. One of them is uh, we had a guy open up uh, 
Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Open up on us, and uh, I, I pin him down, and I turn my buddy around to try to get him behind him and get him from behind because I kept I kept my BDR going. <laughs> so he didn't dare show up his face again, and my buddy shot him. Got around behind him, and he, he, he got him. And where was that? No, 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 you don't no. know where you were, somewhere. I, I didn't know. Somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Um, and, and then you got the old police cluster. What was that for? And then the, uh, oh, we uh, were out on the patrol again. The ten guys, we come to this little wood here. And uh, some Germans were running around. We got, we got nine, nine prisoners over there. And then after we got out of the woods, a uh, big open field and there was like a, a gun emplacement and the, the sergeant says uh, NATO go there with you see what that is out there so me, me and my, my assistant BER man Russell Morgan his name was he was my assistant BER man we went out there and as we get there it's, it's just a dummy a tree camouflage like a and uh, there's a hole nearby and and so I tell my buddy, he, I throw a grenade in the hole there, you know. And so he pulls the grenade out, he pulls the pin, and just as he pulls the pin, a uh, bullet hit between him and I on the ground there, and you see the dirt fly up, so we hit the ground. So he said, Theta, what am I going to do with this? He's got a grenade with the pin pulled out. Well, I said, he's right near the hole. I said, throw it in the hole if you can't get to do it. And I said, well, you fire and I'll move up. And then you do the same. So we we attack two of us. <laughs> we don't know anybody. We get halfway up there and that white flag comes out and this is 39 fully armed German comes out of there and give it up to us. I guess they figured there were two, two nuts attacking us. <laughs> How many Germans? 39. 39 Germans yeah. surrendered to you and your assistant? My assistant. Yeah, that's it. So what did you do? So they came halfway to us and then we said, go that way because the rest of the company was in that little town there, just nearby. So they went over there and so when, when we get back, they said to us, they said, oh, we got 39 prisoners. I, I said, bullshit. I said, we sent them to you. <laughs> I'm surprised they went. I'm surprised too because all they had, 39, all they had to do is fire one bullet apiece and they're bound to kill, uh, kill the two of us. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but. <laughs> you and your buddy must have been pretty surprised. What were you thinking when. No, you, you, don't, think any, you don't think about anything then. All we, all we know is we're, somebody's shooting at us, so we shoot at them. And what are we going to do? Turn around and run? Then they, they, would, then they could have mowed us down, right? So we must have been pretty accurate in picking some off in there. I don't know how many, never got back to get a chance to see how many there was in that trench. Was when there we, anybody in the hole where he threw the grenade? No, there was nobody there. That was just a dummy <laughs> hole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was somewhere in Belgium that you took those prisoners? Yeah. You don't even know where you were. No, I don't know anything. <laughs> uh, did you receive any other medals or citations? No, you just got the those European uh, services there. Uh, tell me about a couple of your memorable experiences. Mm. Besides capturing thirty-nine German <laughs> prisoners, that's pretty memorable. Well, the thing is, what coming back to is, uh, uh, my buddy was a uh, amateur uh, boxer, so there was machine gun. A fire side firing on us. We're coming back to the, join the, uh, the rest of the squad, you know. So uh, my buddy made it to the woods and the rest of the guy. And there, the guy said, come on, come on. I was pooped. I, I'd run uh, so much and my gun is heavier than the M1, you know. And uh, then I stopped running and I just plod along and the bullets were cutting across here. And then I started running and run other ways and then I stopped and the bullets, you know, stopped running and then Bullets were cutting across again. If I kept running, I would have run into them. <laughs> I, I was just lucky that. Uh, yeah. yeah. But they um, they uh, call for artillery on that hill, and then they went and checked. There was uh, uh, two uh, MG42, that machine gun, the German machine gun, that fire about 
1,600 rounds per minute, and there were four MG34 that fired about 1,200 rounds per minute. But they didn't use them all at once because I think they, they had set up a trap. Figured a whole company would have come in, like we did, the squad, and that's just where the two of us went. They had those soldiers over there, then they had those machine guns set back there. I guess it, we're going to try to get them in between the, uh, the two fire, you know? Can you recall any other incidents? Uh, no, mostly it was just fighting and this and that, going on patrol. Oh, yeah. And Duesenberg, I, I think the name of the city was. Uh, uh, the Germans were. Uh, we went on the patrol again, and we were on the bank, there was a lake there, and we, we went up the hill and we were looking. The Germans are right above us, 40 feet away, and they're crossing the bridge. And the bridge is loaded with Germans and, the, and everything, and all at once, kaboom! It blew their own bridge, the bridge with their own people on it. They were afraid of, of us getting it. They blew it. I couldn't believe it, huh? The bridge was so loaded with their people, they blew it up so we wouldn't get our hand in it because that was on the Rhine River. That's a big breakthrough there if we got an intact bridge, you know? Do you recall any other incidents? Oh, towards the end of the war there, uh, uh, near the Elbe River. That's, this was in April, um, on April 22nd. They had tried to take this town with tanks and infantry, and they, and they got the tank knocked out. And so the third day, they just, they just went uh, 20, uh, 20 guys, 20 infantrymen, they, they used the drainage ditch. They got in behind the Germans, went in the house, and they, then they would shoot at the Germans at the foxhole <laughs> from the houses. <laughs> so anyway, what happened is a lot of them took off, went to the, to the Elbe River and went across, and uh, there was uh, 35 dead Germans laying around. You know, and we're there, that was towards the end of the war, so we stayed there for four or five days. And uh, we got... Uh, the Grave detail came around to pick up the, the German, you know. So this little PSC and myself were uh, walking around. This good little guy is about 135 pounds, and uh, there was only a lieutenant and a sergeant loading those dead Germans on on those high trucks, you know. So the lieutenant says, "Hey, how about giving us a hand? You know, it's hard because it's, you need actually three huh, people." So this is this little PSC. He said, "Lieutenant," he says, "We kill him." You haul him away. <laughs> I had the biggest laugh. <laughs> he said the way he said that. Yeah, you, we kill him. You haul him away. <laughs> so did you have to help with the grave duty or no. not? You no, no. They that that's where you could, you could talk back to an officer, and they wouldn't say nothing. We were infantry. <laughs> we we were in the rough of it. They would just have to pick up the body, you know. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a few questions about daily life. Uh, how did you stay in touch with your family when you were over in the seas? <coughs> what did you call that? The B mail there? And what was that like? I've got a. <coughs> you've got one there that I wrote to my sister. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll scan that in too. Uh huh. Uh, did you get mail on a regular basis? Yeah. yeah. How could they find you out in the field all the time? I don't know how they did it, but so they periodically did. Periodically, the mail would catch yeah. up with you and you would yep. get your mail? What was the food like? Food, uh, mostly uh, dehydrated stuff, you know. And, uh, yeah, I know. But about, about every uh, two weeks, something like that, they bring you know, a hot meal in thermos, big thermos bottles, you know, cans, and. Uh, it was usually beef stew, and I found out the reason for that is uh, beef stew was greasy, and it would go right through you, so it, it got rid of that, that dehydrated stuff you had in your body. Because <laughs> yeah. one of my buddies, after eating one that stew, he he moved in combat with just his, his boots, a raincoat, his belt, no pants, no he had. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's lucky he could even fight. Um, 
so because you were in the field all the time and constantly moving, did you ever even have uh, oh. set up a, a, like a field kitchen or anything? Oh no, there's one. Anything that that was the kitchen that they used to come from, from the rear when we, when we got slow a little bit. Otherwise, it was just the just a K ration or a D ration. Right. What's the K ration? What's the D ration? Uh, K, K ration is like a, a box of cracker jack. <laughs> <laughs> and just got uh, a little can of meat or cheese in there, crackers, and uh, a pack of two cigarettes, something like that. And, and the uh, done that pretty much. And the other one was uh, canned, uh, canned stuff, you know, they opened it. Yeah. And we, we went without food at, at one time. We were both starving, and one guy had a D bar, which was a chocolate bar. And we were moving on a truck, and that's, we hadn't had food for a day and a half, two days. And my guy had one of those D bars, so he passed it around. We took one little bite and he passed it to the other guy. It <laughs> went around. <laughs> and, uh, I bet you were glad to see real food when you got back. Well, no, where we moved to, we just had to set up at night, and they found a big basket of eggs. So they um, they come and told us, they said, come back one at a time out of the foxhole. We, we were on an outpost, and they, they were cooking eggs. <laughs> so. You got real fresh eggs at one time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, were there other times when you moved into the towns where you, there was food available there, hot food? No, the only hot food we got is was brought on like on the trailer with the thermos. Oh. No, there was uh, an infant, you, you don't have a kitchen set up for you. <laughs> Did you have enough ammunition, clothing, uh, blankets, and other supplies? Uh, yeah. Except we find out and. Uh, in, in uh, Belgium, we all we had was boots, most of us, and, and no overshoes. And uh, they uh, they went to England and asked the uh, the, the, the fly boy, the Air Force, if they'd give to donate their some of their overshoes for us in the front. So we, half of us got some overshoes, but it was too late. It was, we were almost finished in, in Belgium, and uh, so, uh, that's where we had a lot of casualties: frozen feet, frozen fingers. And that was one of the coldest winters on record. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did you survive that? Oh, I, I, I'm from Maine. I'm where I'm a Boy Scout, and uh, I always had a, a spare. Uh, we had bulldog stockings, so I always had a spare part. Put it in my overcoat uh, in here, and the, that would dry them. So when these would get wet, I'd take them off and put the wet ones here and the dry one there. <laughs> Yeah, even though they smell. <laughs> Better to have warm feet. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, did you feel any pressure or stress? No, not really. Not even in the midst of all that combat all the no. time and the rough. Uh, no, like I said, we didn't make any friends because you did If you had friends, they got hurt. Then you, 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 you'd, you'd be hurt. So you didn't make a friend. But after the war, after the fight, and then to made friends. Huh? Now you were with that ten ten man squad. Was it usually the same ten guys? They were usually the same, same ten guy because so you stayed with that. Just Lieutenant Desoni, he he had good luck with us, and, and when he had to go out with somebody, he'd take us. Take you. Yeah. So you ten stuck together. Yeah. Was there anything that you did special for good luck? No, no. How did people entertain themselves? Pardon? How did you entertain yourselves? Didn't now, I know you saw one USO show. Where was yeah. that? I don't remember the town. <laughs> it in see. Belgium somewhere? No, it was in Germany somewhere. Yeah. Oh. And it was, uh, who was there? Oh, it was Bob Hope, uh, Ingrid Ber uh, Berman. Uh, Ber uh, Ingrid Berman. Uh, uh, and Jack Benny? Jack Benny, yeah. Was Bob Hope there with Jack Benny, or, was, or did you see two shows? Uh, two shows. I, yeah, this so, uh, yeah, this, shows? Uh, yeah. Both in Germany? Uh, yeah. In one place uh, where we got a little rest, uh, they had a Red Cross uh, co co coffee place, and you know, they set up and all the donuts there, and they had a state register book, and you know? all. And uh, I went and got my coffee, and I put my name in the register book, and then uh, talking to my uh, buddy, and I'm my coffee, and then I hear somebody all, Hey, 
yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> and uh, he came over to me. He was from my hometown. Your hometown? Yeah. In Van Buren, Maine. In Van Buren, Maine. Maine. Yeah. you all the way in Germany. Yeah, he was a cook in another outfit. <laughs> wow. yeah. When you had downtime, which seems like it wasn't very often, what other things did you guys do for entertainment? Well, at one place, uh, uh, we got... After the bulge, we went into Germany for a way. Then we got stopped in Krefeld, Germany. And uh, what they tried to do is uh, keep us busy. They play football or anything like that. I never played football in my life. So this lieutenant said, you go play football. And then it's a, a buddy of mine comes over. He says, watch yourself. He says, he's got that big guy uh, opposite you. He told, he, told you, he told him to hit you hard. So when they can't try to play, I hit him right first. <laughs> then then I, I, I didn't play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned how to play football. Yeah. Anything else you did for entertainment? Well, like in that town, Creefeld, there was a, a brewery and a distillery. <laughs> so we know what you did there. Yeah, well, not not too much because the the, the distillery, the, the the brewery, the beer was flat, so you couldn't drink that. But the, and then in the cellar there was a this distillery, it brandy, but it was raw. It wasn't. Uh, but some guys were drinking it. They they went out of their heads. So they they bricked the door to go down there. Somebody <laughs> knocked the bricks out to get in there. Then they had, they bricked it again. They had two guys there day and night. <laughs> But we were only there for three or four days, so. <laughs> but the whoever drank that stuff, they were able to go and right out of their mind. <laughs> Did you have any leave or R and R while you were in Europe? No. Nope. Never. No. Nope. Did you get to travel and see anything else while you were there? Well, after uh, the fighting there, I got sent to uh, Reims, France, to work on the machine record unit. That machine record unit was uh, figuring the points the, the guys had to, for discharge, and uh, which I had never worked on those machines and handed thing. <laughs> so I was two months in Reims, France. Then they sent me to Paris I, I, again. The machine record unit. So I uh, getting a little sick of that. So I worked one night and that's it. <laughs> I was sleeping one night and upstairs and. Uh, in the uh, Bechester Hotel in Paris. That's what they had taken uh, the whole hotel over, you know. And I was sleeping upstairs, and the sergeant from downstairs come on. He would come up, and he woke me up. He said, come on down. He said, we got to get those records out for Send to Washington, D.C. So I'm I'm sick and tired of that. So anyway, he come, I went back to sleep. He come up, and he woke me up again, and I told him, I said, Get the hell out of here. I'll kick your ass all the way down. So I figured, well, when I get up in the morning, I'll, I've had it. Not a word. <laughs> not a word. Because, hey, we're infantry. We're not uh, machine record people at all. Well, yeah, but, all right. Um, go back when you were still over in Belgium. Now, you said that you were, uh, you fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Can you tell me what you recall from that battle? Well, it was just cold and miserable and <laughs> you just fought and there's one place there was there was a 30 American tanks knocked out and there had been a tank battle and there was only two German tanks that was knocked out that's a little hard to take <laughs> but see the Germans had uh, heavy heavy tanks and the Americans had this medium medium weight tank because they wanted tanks to move fast, and the Germans were slow, but there was so much armament on them that uh, our our, our shells didn't go through theirs to their tank. Theirs would burn right through <laughs> ours. <laughs> now, off camera, you were telling me some figures, some numbers. Do you remember? Um um, was it numbers of casualties or? Oh, it was uh, during the 11 days or in the Battle of the Bulge, it was something like 19,800 dead Americans and about 40,000 wounded. And the Germans were 
twice that our figure. <laughs> Do you recall any humorous or unusual events while you were overseas? Yeah, I told you one a while ago. Which one? <laughs> the, 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 the burial detail. <laughs> yeah. So, anything else that you can recall? Mm, no, Did not really. Like pranks on each other at all? No. Oh well, I was in Paris. I. Uh, uh, the guys that were in Germany, they had to get the five-day pastor to go to Paris, and they had these restaurants set up with the silverware and the napkins and all the uh, not paper napkins, really, like a regular restaurant. You know? And the guy would have five-day pass from Germany. They'd go in there and uh, they'd punch a pass and they'd eat there for free, you know. So in the company where I was at that majestic hotel, I'd get a pass and fill it out and I go to the restaurant to eat instead of eating in that GI mess. <laughs> I bet that was really nice after having mm -hmm. had all oh, the yeah. patients out in the field. Yeah. Then, uh, well, right off the Arch of Crime, there was a bar there, a Broadway bar, that was, that was named. So when I was in Paris, I used to go there. <laughs> How long did you stay in Paris? Uh, one month. Then I got shipped to La Havre, where we took the ship to come home. What did you think of your uh, fellow soldiers and of the officers? Very nice. Oh, one of them was uh, uh, the regular officer in my company was from Maine, U Union, Maine, yeah, first lieutenant, uh, and ball-headed. Uh, what was his name? Anderson. Anderson? Yeah, A N D. A Union Maine, and uh, about a year and a half after I got home, there was an American Legion convention in Bangor, Maine. Uh, so I went there. I was married then. I was there. I went there with five buddies in the panel truck. So we we get there at night. Then we get a flat tire. We don't know where we are. So anyway, we just slept in the truck and uh, get up in the morning, fix the flat tire. We're in the ballpark. <laughs> That's where we were. Yeah. So. Anyway, we fixed the diet, we went out, figured we'll have breakfast. And so there were some of these uh, legionnaires that had started parading early and they'd been drinking and all <laughs> So all at once somebody hits me on the shoulder and pulled me back. And it was that lieutenant from Maine. And he was there and he had uh, two cabins in, uh, across the river in Brewer, Maine. And he says, well, you got a place to stay? He said, I said, no, we just came in. He said, come on. And he takes us across the river to Brewer and uh, his buddy had a... A big cabin, actually, with two bedrooms, a big place, you know? So he gives me his place, two fifths of whiskey on the door, and uh, here, this is for you and your your buddies. And then he introduced me to his wife, and he says, here, there's a man that saved my life twice, he, he tells his wife. I remember one of them, not twice, I don't remember the second time. <laughs> Do you remember the first time? Yeah, I remember one time he's... Uh, He's trying to get in the house because our own artillery is coming down up down the street firing on us. I guess somebody got the wrong direction. And it's moving fast, and you, you don't want to be in the open. So he's trying to open the door. He can't. You know? So he, he all the needle, get over here. Open that door. <laughs> Kick it in. Then you get in and get down in the basement. Well, you're, you're safe from the artillery. You know? <laughs> wow. So but, he was very grateful, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, he used to, uh, once in a while, he'd get his liquor rash and call me in the PFC to have a drink with the lieutenant. <laughs> See, that seems to be that the, um, because it, you think it's because you were infantry, you had a different kind of relationship with the officers, and you could get away with more? Oh, we get away with more, yeah. Especially other officers of other branches. Because I've seen that in uh, one place where the whole division was pinned down and uh, they had sniper fire and they, they couldn't move. So anyway, some major from the rear line comes up, he had taken, taken, uh, taken a German pistol and uh, their uh, guns are sound different than ours. So the major's there and they're us and he, he tries this pistol. Well, a sergeant goes up and he grabbed the major. He said, you fire that thing one more. He said, you're dead. You're dead here. He let go the major turn around and took off. Now this is a sergeant to a major. 
you don't cannot pull something like that in the front line, you know? <laughs> wow. So you could tell just by listening whether it was an American gun or a Yeah, you, gun? they had a different uh, sound to them. Yeah. What did you think of your fellow soldiers? All right, good. Did you keep a journal or a diary while you were No, were? no. Do you remember any of the other officers? Yeah. There was one that uh, got wounded in the Pacific and uh, came back and they signed him to Germany with, with us and uh, we get a we move into this town here and he, he gets up he, he went on the second floor and, and the Germans were running all the place and they come out in the field hide behind cows and this lieutenant goes up on the second floor and he starts firing and it's our July we just got in the town it shouldn't be anybody on the second floor turn around and he shot him right through the lung <laughs> he didn't kill him though but he uh, he lived who shot him? One of the GI, you know. He, so he thought it was a German that, you know. Was still in the town. No, that's flying on them, you know. Because we, we just got in the town. <laughs> so it was a case of friendly fire. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he lived? Yeah, yeah. you remember his name? No, I don't. But I remember another one, though. His name, his name was his name? McPherson, his name was. He shot uh, one of the uh, lieutenant too, by not by mistake, because uh, uh, when the, the one we were at that place where they blew the bridge up, I was saying before earlier there. Well, we see the silhouette of the guy walking towards us, and he's got no helmet and uh, no overcoat. And all I guys wearing helmet. And so this side next to me, uh, he says, "Halt! Halt!" And he said, halt the third time, he fired one round and the guy fell. And uh, luckily he he fired that round then because I had my BAR and one more second, that he wouldn't have had one bullet in him, he would have had three. So, uh, but he, he didn't kill him though, he wounded him because he was laying there and you hear him say, uh, Lieutenant, help, help. <laughs> so somebody got him and they took him to the uh, medic. And <coughs> but that's friendly fire. But again, he had no business up there. <laughs> Without his helmet. Why didn't he halt when he said halt? Because that, that sergeant that did fire, that he broke down and they never saw him after that. They took him, they took him out, I guess. And I told him, I said, you're lucky you fired. I said, otherwise he would have had three bullets. I had the DER. I said, right on him. <laughs> and he probably would not have survived he'd have been, that. He'd have been dead, yeah. <coughs> Could you describe what would be a typical day for you in the field? Although it doesn't sound like you had many typical days. What would be, <laughs> just go through one day of when you would be out in the field. Like what time would you get up and what would you do? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we just went through day by day. That's all you lived to live for, I guess. Day by day and that's it. Never knew where you were. I mean, you know. You never knew where you were. We well, don't very, very seldom. You know. And what time would you get up in the morning? Whatever time they they want you to get ready to move out, or I don't so know, they like roused that. you out <coughs> for breakfast. You have rations mm -hmm. of that dehydrated food. Yeah. And then you just march until. Yeah, you can get ready and pack up and go. <laughs> and where would you sleep at night? Anywhere that you could. Uh, <laughs> Intense? Like in the town? No, the house very the seldom. We had uh, those ponchos that you put two together and make a fuck tent. You would sleep in that? Uh, probably twice. <laughs> twice. Uh, otherwise, you sleep in the German house on the floor, you know. It must have been pretty cold sleeping <coughs> in the middle of the winter. Middle of winter, yeah. I've seen being in the basement of a house and uh, we'd uh, have a a five gallon metal pail with sand in it and they put pour gasoline in there and that's what they they'd like that. It would burn by black smoke and you would, you would but at least you get a little bit of heat. <laughs> so you would say for the most part you slept in German homes? Yeah. So did you actually have a bed or did you sleep on the floor? Uh, most of the time if you were a, 
too many guys there. No, no, no. Yeah, right. But I got smarter too. I, I usually, I usually got a bed. <laughs> How did you manage to do that? Well, I was always make sure if we're gonna go in the house, I make sure I was in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Imagine the officers had first shot at the beds. All right, so when you went from Reims to Lahar, what was it like in Reims? And where was that? You Reims was uh, where they got the big cathedral there, uh, uh, Reims Cathedral. So you're finally in France. Now, do yeah. you speak French? Yeah, I do, yeah. So did you speak French while you were there? Yeah. Everybody yeah. must have been using you as a translator. <laughs> No, I mean, I spoke French, and the only thing is that when I went to Paris, then you, that's a different French. Uh, and the French we speak up north, is just, we get understood everywhere, <laughs> but ain't, but uh, Paris, I guess. Um, in Paris, how long <coughs> did you stay there? One month. And that's where you slept at the Majestic Hotel in yeah. style? Yeah, that, that the majestic hotel, but we slept on cots, so mind you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but at least you had real food. Yeah, right. Um, now, you, I know you have a newspaper clipping about um, with all the soldiers um, having a mini revolution about going home. Oh, yeah. Where was that? <laughs> that was in Paris. Now, but I, think that? I think that was a put up. Uh, I read years after that. That was communist inspired. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. For the record, will you tell me what happened? Well, we uh, doing around a lot, there's a lot of GI in Paris. They don't leave and this and that and uh, and some station there. So we just hang around doing nothing. And also, they, these newsmen come up and they uh, they got these cameras set up, tripods on top of cars. They had and they started handing out these magnesium flares. You know, hey, uh, oh, we're marching down to the American Embassy. You know, we want to go home. <laughs> so the guys are walking down the newsreel shooting, uh, you know, we want to go home, we're hollering, oh, we want to go home. <laughs> That's it. So you were part of that mini revolution? Yeah, the American right. Embassy? Didn't know it was a mini revolution until uh, two so years after. Called it <laughs> yeah. That. Hey, and uh, did that get you home any quicker by going no, down no. there? No. <laughs> yeah, you just worked by the point system, and that's it. So, okay, so, huh? It was. That's why you were staying in France because of the points. Yeah, you're waiting for the points to, you know, they're discharging. Uh, I, I get little points, so when you get, well, you'll get enough points to get discharged. You get discharged. And how it's do like you a, determine the points? Well, you like the bronze star, they have five points. Cluster is another five points, and and then the, your time too uh, is count, you know. So some of these guys were there for four years. It's uh, some of those rear restaurants, like the machine record unit. They were there for, you know. A long time ago compared to us, but they didn't have medals, <laughs> good points. <coughs> so, the higher the points, the quicker you go home? Yeah, right. <coughs> Do you remember how many points you had? Not really. Just enough to get out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from Paris, you went to La Havre. Did you know that you were on your way home at that point? Yeah, that, then I knew, yeah. So you, how long did you stay at La Havre? Just like a day? No, a couple of days, three days, like that. And what was your trip like back home? Oh, it was nice, yeah. Very what nice. Did you sail on? Oh, it was, uh, had a bigger ship than what we went over. Uh, went over the converted freight freighter. had 1,800 soldiers on it. And, uh, you get up in the mornings for breakfast. You get, you stand in line at five o'clock, and by ten o'clock you got breakfast. Then then you get back in line for for your other meal, and that was it. <laughs> you get. To, that was on the way over. Over. You spent all your time waiting in line for for food. For food. <coughs> so what was the trip like on the way home? Was it any? Oh, time? that was nice though because I had books to read and. Uh, I got called for KP duty, but I was always on the fancy on the ship with a book, and I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> but going over, I, I got KP one time, and I, man, I was glad because I went down in, in the locker. And after that day, I went down the locker, I got two loaves of bread and a pound of butter. And I thought that's where I was. I <laughs> butter and bread. But then after I, I checked again, the door was locked. I couldn't get any more. <laughs> oh, <God. coughs> Where did you land in the United States? 
when you got home. Hmm. New York somewhere. Is that, yeah. And then where did you go? Uh, the, the Dix, uh, Fort Dix. Fort Dix. Back to Fort Dix? Yeah. yeah. How long did you stay there? Uh, just a, three, four days. My guy just getting the process out. And so then you were discharged from Fort Dix? Yeah. And you, then where did you go? Back home to Maine? Yeah, my dad. What did you do in the days and the weeks immediately following your discharge? Well, I went home and uh, didn't have much to do, so I went back to high school. Since I, uh, <laughs> since I got drafted, uh, I left December. And I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't take the mid-year exam. So, but they, and I went back and they said, well, with the service, you can get the uh, enough credit to get the diploma in high school. So I had, that. what are you going to do up north in, in, in the winter? Nothing. So I took up three subjects out there and uh, went to school for the rest of the winter. <laughs> You did. So then, did you graduate in the? Yeah, but I didn't go to graduation. <laughs> Why not? Did you think you were out of place? Yeah, so I you got your high school diploma then after after the war. Yeah, after the war. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, <coughs> in about February of seventy-four. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, you graduated in seventy-four. Yeah. And uh, what did you do after that? Did you have any other uh, job after high school? Well, yeah, I worked in the uh, Dairy Queen in Maine. Dairy Queen. Yeah. 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 Well, then, uh, what did I do? <laughs> well, there wasn't much work. I don't know. And there was much work up north, and uh, so uh, I had a brother in New York working on construction. So I went to New York City. I worked for uh, for six months, but I, being a country boy, I couldn't take it. I had to go back home. <laughs> wow! So you worked construction in New York City yeah. for six months? Yeah. High rise build, building. Uh, 12 and 13 story building. And then when you went back to Maine, what did you do? Uh, I worked on the, the Loring Air Force Base. That's in Limestone, Maine. Loring? Yeah, Loring. Air Force Base, what did you do there? That was construction, too. <coughs> yeah. they, were, uh, they were building it up, you know. <coughs> did you work construction for the rest of your career? Yep. Did you stay at the Air Force Base? No, I moved down here and uh, West Hartford, and I was working with another brother that was doing construction, building homes, so I went with him in partnership. When did you move to Connecticut? Fifty uh, one. Did you go back to school on the GI Bill for any education? No, I did not. No. Robert, I'm going to take a break now just to change the tape. All right. Robert, did you make any close friendships while you were in the service? No, not really, no. No, because I know you told me earlier you didn't want to make friends because you yeah. they might not be around for too long. Um, but then you made some friendships after the service? Yeah, yeah. Well, you were still overseas or after you got back to America? No, overseas. Then you figure you could make friends at all. <laughs> so when you were at um, Paris and Reims, you made friends? Yeah. Do you recall any of those friendships? Yeah, I got some of the pictures that I was taking. I had some in Reims and uh, a few friends there. Okay, in good. In front of the statue of uh, Joan of Arc. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, did you keep continue any of those relationships after the war? No, not really. No. Did you join any veterans organizations? Yeah, American Legion. Up in Maine. Uh, yeah, but then I transferred over here to Windsor Lodge. So, are you a member now? Yeah. Fifty years, uh, fifty some odd years. <laughs> Holy cow! What <laughs> kinds of things do you do with the American Legion? I haven't been going much lately. Uh, well, I never, never went much because I was all we working out of town, construction and all that. So I didn't go too, too much. Now, did you? I think you said you went to a reunion. Did you go to many of the reunions? No, that was about 
No, I went to one in Hartford years and years ago, and then uh, I, after I moved here, you know. But then the other, the first one I went to was in Bangor, Maine. And but that was a reunion of which group? Um, oh, that it was just American Legion. You know? I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a division uh, uh, that they have. You know, I mean, at 84th, I see it in the paper. My division, I was, they're having uh, a meeting in October somewhere. So. Are you going to go? I don't think so. <laughs> Getting too stiff leg now. <laughs> About three years ago, I fell down over here and I broke L1, my lower back, L1 and my L4. Ooh. So I was in that rehab over here for three months. <laughs> Gee, you could have just walked yeah. down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Yes, the same thing is happening now that happened to us. It, uh, spent billions of dollars for everything for airplanes and this and that, and the guy that's fighting the, the foot is almost short of something. <laughs> you know, that's not fair. How did the service and the military experiences you had affect your life? Well, to tell you the truth, I mean, I uh, turned 18 and I, I was going to graduate from high school. I come from a small town, a big family, with 12 kids. So uh, uh, college was out of the question. So when I got my notice with the draft, Boy, that was a relief. That's it. I know where I'm doing now. <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> I tell you the truth, that was a relief. Yeah. Wow. And then after the war, how did you feel about it? Nothing. I just wanted to make a living after the war. <laughs> now, you had such a big family. Um, did your siblings serve? Yeah. I, uh, my older brother was in the Marines and, and in the Pacific. He got wounded there. And then the, the brother after me, he was in Japan, the Army of Occupation. And then the other brother, young, younger than that, he was in Korea. <laughs> wow. So several of you were in the service in different places all at the same time. Yeah, different, different time. But uh, but the youngest brother, well, uh, he got hit you know, when he was a kid all over here, and he's he blind. And, and, Killed the nerve and he's blind with one eye. So uh, during the uh, Vietnamese War, he couldn't get a job anyway because he was that drafted age. He was classified one eight. So finally, he went to the Air Force and volunteered. Blind one eye. And they took him. No. They, oh. So they gave him a, a four up. Then he he got a job anyway. So he went to work for uh, uh, in uh, Windsor Locks that. Uh, not threatened with the uh, Hamilton Standard. Hmm? Hamilton Standard. Um, yeah. Oh. Um, is there anything else that you would like to tell me about that we haven't covered in this interview? Is there any other stories or incidents that you can recall? Not right off. No. <laughs> any other memorable experiences, good or bad? <laughs> no, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. You will later. Well, I probably will later. You will when we do. Um, so then we'll scan in all your uh, documents and your photographs and we'll add this to your record. But I'd like to thank you for your service and I'd like to thank you for your interview. Thank you.